Brian has, has mentioned to you already this morning, um, uh, which is actually in the field just opposite, one of the fields is just opposite the barn that you, uh, you we were in this morning. Uh, we're here, I think because uh, this is the main drainage uh, channel for the, where all the water um, from, from the farm uh, flows out and, uh, and uh, Brian has been out with his jug sampling. Um, but basically, in response to his first year of measurements where Brian saw that the amount of nitrate in, um, in coming out of the drains was very much related to the amount of crop cover. Um, that he had over over winter so that was whether that was cover crop or whether that was um, the performance of the winter winter crop where it was better there was less nitrate so in response to this um, he set up two split field experiments as I say one of them is literally just as you walk out of the barn if you want to look at it later uh, and the other one is just over the way um, and the beauty of those fields is that each field has two separate drainage systems in it. So we've been able to site plus and minus cover crop on the two separate drainage systems. So that when he goes out with his jug, we know that the nitrate that, or the water that we're collecting from those outflows is related to that piece of land that has had cover crop or not, as the case may be. So in Big Lawn, which is the one up, at, uh, up near the, the yard, um, he ploughed the field uh, and then uh, established a cover crop, as I say, on one half. And then in the other field, which is called Hills Field, he just did a light cultivation. Uh, so we've got more of a stubble only and then the cover crop. So the cover crop was a mix of um, radish and rye, known to be good at producing a good root system and um, taking up nitrogen. And the work very much links into um, the more larger scale research project that Emily mentioned, Maxi Cover Crop, which has been looking at uh, different species of cover crop and uh, mixes of those uh, species on things like um, nitrogen uptake, the performance of the spring crop and the winter crop, uh, and soil properties. There's a recent article in um, a CPN magazine on, on that trial, so if you want to find out a bit more about it, um, come and grab a copy of that afterwards. Um, but basically what we've done, these are the two fields down here, we've got in each half of the field we've got three sampling locations for looking at soil properties and crop performance, um, and as well as Brian running out and collecting the drain water, we've looked at soil mineral nitrogen, crop nitrogen and as I say soil properties. Now unfortunately it wasn't really a good season for doing this last year because it was just so dry, so the cover cover did struggle to establish, um, but we did get cover, we produced about one, one and a half tonnes of dry matter in, in the cover crop, and we did eventually get drainage in February, um, just a, a, a few uh, drainage occasions which Ian will talk about in a minute, but if, if you just have a look, this chart is in your handout actually, but it, 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 go, it shows you a good um, idea of what the nitrogen's doing. So the blue bars are what was in the soil in the autumn when we put the cover crop in. So down to 90 centimetres, the mineral nitrogen in the soil. Um, and, you, and so we've got big lawn and hills. So we see there's about 60 kilos of nitrogen so just sitting in the soil before winter. We then uh, obviously had a cover crop or we had either ploughed but or snubble. Um, and you can see that, that when we went in March, we did the same. We measured soil mineral N to 90, but we also measured what was in the, the above ground biomass. So the next bar has got the brown is what was in the soil. The green was what was in the cover crop. So for example, in here, big lawn, the ploughed site, we've actually, because we've hardly had any drainage over winter, we've actually pretty much recovered everything that was there in the beginning. It's just that about 40 kilos was in the cover crop, 20 kilos in the soil. Interesting, where there was no cover crop, there's a tiny bit of volunteer growth, so we did get some above ground biomass. But actually again, we recover it, we've recovered pretty much all that was there in the beginning is there again, if not more. Um, and we think that's because we've basically ploughed the soil, it's been fairly warm, we've got some extra mineralisation that's happened over that winter period. 
Um, so actually, we're pretty much even, even Stephen, as it were, when it comes to um, to, to the spring. The the uh, hills field, which was the, the lighter cultivation, um, a slightly different story. The cover crop didn't perform so well there, um, but again, we're recovering pretty much the same. Um, interestingly, obviously, we've got stubble. We have more volunteer growth on that. Um, uh, on this <coughs> where there was no cover crop so we actually got some green cover cover there too so what um, Brian's done now is he's got a linseed uh, crop across the top and um, he's been out when he, just before he put his fertilizer on and he put some tarpaulin down on various paces so that actually we've got some zero end bits so the idea is we want to try and see when that when that green, the, the uh, nitrogen in that uh, in the cover crop has actually come up, come out. Is there a difference in that zero end bit? So we're not um, we're not masked by the amount of nitrogen that we've put on. So we're going to look at the crop performance in those plus and minus n uh, bits. The other thing we're doing is looking at soil properties. So again, linking into maxi cover crop. So uh, <coughs> aside from um, the benefits from nitrate leach leaching. We're looking to see does it improve, does the cover crop improve um, soil quality, soil health, soil structure. So the, the, the covers we've chosen, they're really good at rooting. We've got um, radish rye, produce lots of roots. Um, so we've uh, measured, we've done a visual soil evaluation, we've counted earthworms, we've done penetration resistance. So we've done that as the cover came out. We're repeating it again next uh, spring uh, in the winter crop. To see if is there a legacy effect? Um, how long does the effect of that cover crop uh, uh, have on the, on the soil properties? Um, so we're still munching through the data, but here's just an example of the earthworms that we saw. So uh, we've got a uh, big lawn, which is the ploughed and the lightly cultivated. So this is total earthworm number, but we've also split it according to whether they're surface dwelling, they're um, deep dwelling earthworms. Uh, and we didn't see much of a difference in the um, in where the cover crop was uh, on the, the sort of lightly cultivated, probably because the cover crop didn't perform quite so well there. But certainly we've got higher earthworm numbers um, where we had the cover crop established on the plough uh, plots compared to no cover crop. So there's early indications that we are uh, improving our, our soils. Um, but if we just go back now to looking at uh, the drainage results, um, I'll hand over to Ian, because um, there's a clear demonstration that even when we don't get a good cover, you know, what I would say a good cover crop, one tonne of dry matter, there's still a huge impact on, um, uh, on the nitrate concentrations of, uh, that's coming out of the, the drain. And Ian will show you what that is. <laughs> right, well, hopefully this will go all right. Um, when Teresa said we're going we're to have to do it in the field, uh, I think I assumed I was going to have to do it using the medium of dance. Um, <laughs> but then I thought, well, I could always do some laminates, and I'll see. Let's see if this, <coughs> this does work. Um, yeah. Do you um, want to hold them in? Or you... uh, no, no I'll, I'll stick them here. Tell me if you can see them. Anyway. From the point of view of the water company, nitrate is a big issue for us because we can't take nitrate out. We have to blend it out. We're at the headwaters of the Waveney. It was one of the first designations in 1998 as an NVZ. So it's been, nitrates have been an issue in the Waveney right from the get-go. Um, and that was when only 8% of the country was in. Phosphate is not an issue for us as a, there isn't a water quality standard for phosphate. In fact, we add phosphate to drinking water uh, to stop plumbo solvency, to stop lead from coming in, into solution if you've got lead in your pipes. But it is an issue for us uh, in terms of eutrophication, particularly on our still water abstractions. So on the broads and on Fritton and Lound Lakes, phosphate can encourage algal blooms and then you've got to take the algae out and that's <coughs> another, another uh, issue as well. So phosphate is an issue uh, for us in the bigger picture, but immediately it, it's nitrates is the big one. So this here, if you can have a look at that, that's big lawn, that's the over, leftover winter on the plough and that's where the cover crop is. And you can see when we're talking up there over 300 uh, milligrams of N and down here we're talking about seven or eight and, and it's consistent right from the first flush right the way through you know it really did hang on to it. Um, 
I apologise for the word full inversion. That isn't full inversion. That's lightly cultivated down to about 15 centimetres. So that's that's the, another version, and that was on hills. Um, and that was is in the cover crop was had had that, and the other half was left as a stubble. So even then, you can see that the cover crop was considerably better than an overwintered stubble. However, um, if you look at it this way here, there is a difference. The stubble is still twice as good as the plough. You know, that, that on a, when you're using the same metric, the, the stubble's sort of 120 is what we were finding. We were finding 300s on the plough. So the stubble certainly does, does, does leach considerably less. There were three other, there was another crop uh, on West Farm, which was also a cover crop, and that was strip tilled. But that was, I just threw that in because it's just another me method of establishment. But in all cases, um, it seems actually the plough and cover crop and the strip till and cover crop leached less than the minimal cultivation. Whether it's because it got away better, whether it was a better cover crop, I, there's there's nothing here that says that all cover crops were equal. You know, it's a bit like a, an animal farm, all, all crops are equal, but some are more equal than others. I mean, it may well that one was just a pretty poor poor crop, I don't know. But so that, that was that. Um, when you look at nitrate losses whoop, from other crops, uh, these are exactly the same data, but it's just showing them, showing them differently. Um, as you can see from here on Big Lawn, the first drain flow in December didn't even happen. The cover crop, the land under, you know, the, the, the drains didn't <coughs> run where the cover crop was in because we, we'd had enough rain to get the other fields running, but the cover crop had obviously was soaking up the water. Um, but as you can see, the cover crop is, is fantastic. The next best one actually is winter barley. Uh, barley does get away quickly. And, and it does seem to, it soaks up quite a lot of the nitrate. It's far better than the other things. Surprising one was, I'd have thought that grass, which is this one, the same thing up here, would have been brilliant, but I don't know, you may know David, was that, how long that grass been in? Is that what, first year? That? That's first year. That's right. first year, all right. So that, that, that may not have... was very popular, not a good Right, so, grass. so whereas you'd expect, uh, yeah, because there's a thing I noticed, uh, which we will come on to in, a, in another year. I'll, I'll show this in a minute, yeah. The crops are, we can't tell. On the, on the graphs there, you're pointing out they are crops, but we can't tell from here. Sorry, that's winter wheat, strip tilled, that's winter wheat, full inversion, winter wheat, that's grass, that's winter barley, on, which was ploughed, that's winter wheat, which was, uh, it says full inversion, so I suppose that's ploughed, and that's, that's the cover crop which was ploughed. But if you look at um, the previous year, this was, shrubbery was grass, and that was in its second year, and that certainly was soaking up the nitrate. So, you know, that, that first one we said was, it's un unfortunate, you know, that it wasn't that the grass was, was, doesn't work, it was just, it was, by the time it's established, the grass was then almost performing as well as the cover crops, because you had a good, good establishment. Uh, but yet again, you know, the, the barley in 2017-18 was also quite good. The barley was considerably better than the wheats, and the plough, Overwinter plough was rubbish in both years, but you'd expect it to because why wouldn't it be? Uh, and that's just looking at the same stuff. Obviously, it do did diminish. The first flush was high, and, and as you went through the season, each subsequent one did, did, did get lower. Um, just having this on the phosphate, um, I said you wouldn't expect cover crops to be brilliant at phosphate, and they're not. They're no better than anything else. This is big lawns. Uh, that's cover crop. That was wheat. Uh, the barley did actually had, had lost less phosphate than anything else, um, but generally, yeah, you don't grow cover crops to, to, to hold on to phosphate. But one thing you can see, the f this was the one, there wasn't any drain flow in the December one, but in the other ones there was, and you can see that the first flush, there was quite a lot of phosphate. Now whether that's as Brian said, there's a lot of sediment in the, the pipes, and so, you know, that first bit of rain when the drains first flowed, some of the samples he had were very cloudy, uh, the ones that they're not, not had, hadn't drunk enough beer samples. Um, and that may well be because the sediment was hanging in the pipes, suddenly the drains start to run and that phosphate will have been appended, to, you know, attached to the sediment. Uh, but as I say, I, I don't think, based on this, you aren't growing cover crops because you're worried desperately about phosphate. You know, it doesn't, you know, it's not what they do. They don't soak up enough phosphate to make a difference. But with nitrate, they certainly do. Um, and as I was surprised, the barley, uh, whether it's a particularly good crop of barley, but it, that seems to, it was, seems yeah. to pull it up quite well. Yeah, and the other thing is, I suppose here is slightly different, because we don't have any rape in the rotation here, as rape is effectively, well it's not effectively a brassica, it is a brassica, like most cover crops, 
it too would be interesting perhaps to see what the drain flow would be like under a good crop of rape because rape drilled in the second week of August is not much different from a cover crop smacked in the second week of August. The only difference is, and we have discussed this, and certainly it happens at Saul, you actually grow a cover crop like a crop. I mean, Paul Hobson says he doesn't look upon it as, as a cheap lot, it's just a crop. You, uh, you have to work at it, you have to, he doesn't try to grow cover crops at the cheapest cost, he grows the best cover crop. And on some of them, you put fertilizer on to get a good cover crop, and you can sort of put 30 kilos of fertilizer on, and you'll have a better crop and it will soak up far more than the stuff it didn't have any put on. And that's another discussion to have because there's some evidence that with the digestate that may not be the way to go but but be that as it may you know and you can't put any fertilizer on winter cereals under rb209 except rape and you can put 30 kilos on but if if that means you get a tr if you, and if the, the big deal here is if you get any rain because if you put the rape in if anything sets in dry all september that doesn't seem to help you know um but if you do get some good weather and you do get that, that nitrate, nitrate can get put into solution and the crops can get a hold of it, you may end up putting 30 on to capture 100. You know, so, but every year is different. Have you done any uh, root biomass uh, measurements? There must be a direct correlation between... Well, we had this question last time, yeah. yeah not not no. here, but the Maxi Cover Crop Project is, yeah. it, that's one of its key aims is to look at rooting. Um, and to see how, in particular, how the, 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 the roots of different cover crop species vary and whether that then impacts on the rooting and the soil properties down the line. There is big differences, so we've got me we have got measurements of root biomass. So rye in particular is very good at, at um, producing a lot of biomass, phacelia, um, radish, they, they are the ones with the, the big so I'm, I'm, I'm working on the basis of growing a crop of wheat and, and, and probably a growth pro root growth promoter, much like we've been talking about phosphates, yeah. placed, um, you know, growth promoters, um, if you're going to be sowing later into colder soils. Yeah, well, or, or even if you're sowing early, if you yeah. get the crop more competitive early. Yeah, yeah. Can I just ask a question? Have you, have you done this work on organic systems, whereby to compare the difference between what was naturally in the soil without any man-made inputs to see where the, the nat natural balance of what comes out of your soils are with your cultivation against perhaps what we've been putting on as more, more conventional farmers? Yeah. No, no, we've not done that work, but I mean, it's years ago, there, though, was a, there, was, there was a lot of uh, work into are organic systems better for nitrates? Well, I think it was nitrates and phosphate, we've just been talking about placing fertilizer down the spout or not what's in the, and then Ian says there's loads in the soil, so <coughs> it's interesting to see what the background was against what are in, you know, where we've actually applied man-made fertiliser. Yeah, yeah. The other thing we were looking at, we are saying, you know, looking at snapshot years, last year was an abnormally dry summer, this year you might have said it was an abnormally dry winter, I mean we had mm -hmm. average rainfall, yeah. we didn't have any rainfall at all really for May, June and July, we had average in August, 50% of average September, average October, 50% of average November, average for December and then since then we've probably been been below average right the way through and so were we to have a really hard cold year where you wouldn't get soil mineralizing you may lose less other years you can get a really really warm year so we've had a quite a, quite a, a mild spring realistically maybe this wouldn't be replicated in a really or could be could be even bigger nitrate leaching in a really cold year so the only advantage of having a six-year uh, trial is you can try and take out those anomaly years so you, know, you would hope if you get a stupidly dry summer or an unusually wet bit or an unusually cold bit, you're not going to get them every year for six. They will just be so on a scatter graph. You know, you get the line of best fit, and all the, the really weird events would be outside of that. And so that is the advantage of a six-year one. So after two years, it's quite hard. You can't really draw many conclusions. We chose the baselining year was last year. <coughs> and it was a hellishly wet spring. I mean, January, February, March, and April. It didn't stop raining really. <coughs> and then we had a stupidly dry summer so uh, and you can't always compare with each field each year you're looking at a different crop but it could be more friable you get better soil to, to root contact you know a, a better drainage um, there's everything so different that you can't ever look at one year and, and, and say well it's better or worse but you get an overall trend and when you start looking at lots of sites around the country you then can start to to, to, to bring all that together and so you 
when we look at all our water quality data, we sample thousands of sample points. And individually, I can make anything look disastrous, and I can find something that looks fantastic. Um, can, I, can I ask about um, cover crops? Are obviously, undeniably, soaking up nutrients that might be leached through drains. In the spring, the crops that we're sowing are going to need that nutrition that's locked up in the cover crop. Now, obviously, that's not going to be available right at the start, <coughs> which leads us to maybe <coughs> introducing artificial fertilizers <coughs> earlier to help the early nutrition of those crops. So are we going to be any better off when there's still a risk of um, you know, further <coughs> rainfall and further flooding if we're putting nitrogen on? Yeah, well, uh, it, uh, obviously <coughs> timing of the destruction in compared, compared to when you establish your uh, spring crop is, is critical there. Actually, we are finding that nitrogen, depending on the cover crop, it does, does tend to start releasing fairly fairly quickly we've not seen a knock back in terms of at early establishment if anything you not in this case here unfortunately but in in most in a lot of situations you there's a case for reducing your nitrogen fertilizer right. overall where you've got the cover crop no i thought we, that it was always going to be locked up no for, um, so i mean um well. we've got some work I, I've, I've i've recommended that they they knock back their fertilizer by about 40 kilos where we've 40, uh, where we've had the cover crop um, and and uh, the idea here is that we are going to try and just track that a little bit by having these zero end bits where he's uh, not putting fertilizer on. We're going to try and see if there is extra recovery of nitrogen in the crop where we've had the cover crop compared to where we haven't had the cover crop. And so we're going to do that. that for Harvest 2020 as well, aren't we? Yes. So it'll be the spring, yes. the spring crop this harvest, this harvest and then the and winter yeah. cereal crop yeah. Yeah. the next. And then the plan is as well, as we said, you know, one year or two years in, in random uh, weather conditions. So actually what we're going to do is we're going to find another two fields That's to, really good. to yeah. do yeah. bits from the start again this autumn. Yeah. So there'll be another two that fields would be good because we're, we're only, because we're, it was a relatively poor cover crop, we're only tr we're trying to track 30, 40 kilos of nitrogen, which is, mm, to be honest, quite difficult mm. to do. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So the one thing that the farm has taken away <coughs> so far with this is something growing is better than nothing. Yes, yes. definitely. You know, you can spray it but establishing your cover crop, well, like you said, you've got to grow the crop, you know, and treat it really nicely. You have. Volunteers are doing something. Yeah. Let it, let it, you know, yeah. get something in the ground. Like the soil estate does that as well. They do it over a seven-year rotation, and they never have bare land. Yeah. The three spring crops, yeah. so the crops that are coming for spring will, the sh before sugar beet, before yeah. spring beans, yeah. will always have a cover crop. Yeah. So